Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Ali, this is my sister Jess, and together we grow, arrange, film and photograph flowers. Our YouTube videos are all about making beautiful flower arrangements, and one of our biggest passions is going to visit gardens to get inspiration on colours and textures and different plants um, that we could use in our arrangements. And a few days ago we went to visit Chelsea Physic Garden, which is a small garden in London, in Chelsea in London. It's, um, it was started in 1673 and it's the second oldest botanic garden in the UK, second to Oxford, which is also a very beautiful botanic mm. garden if you can visit. And Chelsea was originally a sort of training space for uh, apothecaries, I think. Mm. So um, it's still split into different areas and there's medicinal the plant collection is sort of made up of medicinal plants, um, edible plants and useful plants that can be used to make things. And it's got an extraordinary plant collection. It's a very beautiful, calm, green space in, in the middle of London. So the garden is now a charity and you can visit all through the year and they have different kind of events on and tours on, um, plant tours on. And at the moment this week, they have something called Heralding Spring, which is looking for those first little signs that something is happening in the soil. So it's mainly things like snowdrops and hellebores and the, the very first bulbs that are coming up. And you can go to the garden and they do guided tours through the day and they sort of take you around and they have, they have a really big collection of snowdrops. So there's all different types um, and we love snowdrops. Mm. If you can go, it's on until Sunday. this Sunday, yeah. 28th. Um, and yeah, highly recommended. So being January, it's relatively colourless um, at the moment. There's a very limited palette of colours in the garden, aren't there? Mm. Um, I think because, you know, obviously there isn't a lot in flower now and the main colours are, um, you know, some very sort of crisp whites, obviously a lot of greenery, and then the sort of slightly more metallic colours, so gold, gold and silver. The snowdrops are amazing now. They're just beginning because we've had a bit of a cold snap, so they're just sort of getting going, but there's clumps all over the garden of different varieties of snowdrops. They're really fascinating because they have such different characters. They're one of my favourite ones is very short, and it's kind of tucking its, um, its flower head underneath, and it's mm. called Grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, others are kind of a bit more flamboyant and have longer stems and are um, a bit more showy. I like the ones that turn up, they're turning yeah. back. Yeah, the petals. Yeah, are really that's nice. so yeah. beautiful. And there's a few aconites, so um, some some yellow, you know, very low clusters of yellow. Vinca, which is such a lovely um, mm. sort of ground cover plant with very slender stems and amazing variegated leaves. Um, there's a beautiful one called Deformis, which is a white, has a very crisp white flower. There were some amazing hellebores and um, an incredible iris, which is called Walter Butt, which is a, an Algerian iris that properties from it were used to treat diabetes. Really beautiful, mm. very short, I think maybe it's a dwarf iris, but it's very short stemmed mm. and has these beautiful lilac falls, it's gorgeous. Oh, some roses were in flower, Yeah, actually. we were quite surprised to see this particular rose. There were two of them, I think, on mm. either sides of the Huge. garden. In flower, and we thought it was um, Mutabilis, which is a sort of beautiful, pinky, very open... Single petal rose. yes. Yeah. But it wasn't... Um, and we were so surprised because it was covered in blooms, and obviously it's January here in the UK, so you don't see many roses. And what was the name of it? We found the name of it. It was called Odorata Bengal Crimson. Bengal Crimson. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And also um, one of the rose shrubs was called St. Swithin's, which was really beautiful and it had lots of blooms on it, but they were obviously flowered a long time ago and then they just sort of stayed and, and dr sli slowly dried and slightly fading pink and they were gorgeous yeah. as well. What, what else inspired you for your arrangement this week? So obviously the snowdrops, but there are also, there's lots of lovely silvery foliage in the garden, so there's lots of shrubs with gorgeous sort of silvery grey foliage, and then there's a lot of dried, really interesting textural elements mm. in the garden mm. there, and they've basically left all the perennials to 
um, just be in the gardener's tex textural interest and the seed heads are really beautiful mm. um, and very defined and very interesting to look at and that's where I think the colour comes in with the, the sort of the gold and the silvery yeah. um, metallic colours yeah. in the garden so it feels very, you know, it's got that slightly, um, it's got that really wintry feeling yeah. basically. Also um, you can, sorry, you, I was just going to say you can see the shapes of those plants, like it's quite interesting with the asters because obviously aster means star, and you it's almost like you can see that better when their petals are off because you have these beautiful star shapes, yeah. on them, sort of golden star shapes. Yeah. So I really love those. Yeah, even though there's not a lot of colour in the garden at the moment, there's a lot of scent, really amazing scents, and and probably because you know there isn't as much interest as there is in the, the rest of the year you really really notice yeah. it so you sort of walk around and you get these sort of drifting amazing scents from the Daphne and then um the witch hazel um the Saka Cocker was mm. gorgeous yeah that was really strong actually. really strong amazing smells and uh, obviously the rue I love yeah. the which scent. we used last week in our arrangement last week we yeah. used a little bit of rue foliage yeah oh it's gorgeous for this week's arrangement I wanted to make something that was inspired by Chelsea Physic Garden, incorporating snowdrops as the main, one of the main flowers and hellebores, and then um, silvery, um, very shapely silvery foliage, and some of the dried textural elements to um, create the shape and the structure. It was fun, it was, a, it was a really fun arrangement to make actually, it's quite a challenge at this time of the year, but mm. there's always things that you can find mm. in the garden if you look really carefully. Um, and I think the main thing was, is just editing those ingredients down, especially of the dried ingredients, because there's a lot of clutter on the stems and there's a lot of sort of crossing, you know, dried, wiry branches. So it's sort of trimming those out and making them very, um, very strong, mm. beautiful sculptural shapes. If you haven't seen our online classes before, we have an online class called Garden to Vase, which is a four part class and it was recorded over the course of a, an entire year so it really shows those seasonal shifts and the first class is winter to spring and it really focuses on this kind of pivotal moment in the year which is very um it's a transitional moment when you're you can just about see that next season starting to kind of peak up but you're not quite there yet and you're definitely not at the beginning of the last one so um, we find it really interesting to use materials in the garden that um, are sort of slightly unusual, things that you wouldn't necessarily think to include in a flower arrangement or you maybe haven't tried using before in a flower arrangement. And this particular time of the year is a really fantastic time to do that. And in Garden to Vase, we do that by using dried grasses, so cutting back the perennial grasses in February and using those with the first spring bulbs. You can find all the details for Garden to Vase below in the description box and also uh, the varieties that are mentioned in this video. And don't forget if you subscribe to the channel you'll know as soon as a new video goes live. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time. See you next time.